right. So our boy Timmy. Tim oh, Ellington. The one-eyed pirate. <laughs> Should we start it over? I don't I think he's got two eyes. Well, you know. He's got a patch over. In his profile picture. Yes. Let me put it to you this way. Odds are he's got two eyes. You swashbuckling son of a gun. Hashtag QA from our live chat. Um, how do you think uh, coaching can compensate for strategic talent? The Bills seem to draft physical talent in Edmonds and Allen, as you could coach a QB to Tom Brady level or something close to it. In my opinion, do you think this was a good choice, or would they have been better off having less confidence in their ability to coach players up strategically? So, uh, long story short, what's this question? Was it the right move for the Bills to draft talent, right? and depend on their ability to coach them up, was that the mm -hmm. right move? Or should they really have taken, um, you know... Uh, More polished? Yeah, but players, players that would have fit their, you know, schematic... Like, uh, more players who would have impacted more quickly, right away. I actually, I agree with him here. I think it's a good point and a good question to be raised. Did mm -hmm. the Bills draft talent over best fit? Right? Is that what they did? Well, it depends. It, I mean, the... Are you saying, does Allen fit in the Buffalo offense? I mean... Because Edmonds at will, if you move him... I mean, because they're, they're trying to make him a middle linebacker. I mm -hmm. understand that. Um, were there other, other middle linebackers that were better? Probably. Two or three of them were off the board by then. You gotta think as well. Uh, but they traded up to get him, they traded up to get Allen. I think it's a I think it's an excellent question. Uh, you know, there's an old saying that says, um, uh, the battle is not always by the won by the strong, nor the race by the swift, but that's the way to bet. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you yeah. if you have the clay the, uh, not Charles. No, no. If you have we don't the, want that clay. If you have the amount of clay that you can mold into, okay, he. I don't have to do anything with this kid physically. He's a physical specimen. Um, so what I have to do is I just have to make sure that he can get it. And the way that they've developed players on their practice squad mm -hmm. that have come in and fit into their scheme, I think that may have been their mindset, that they can coach up anybody that they get. Um and make them a successful player. Now, these guys are rookies, and they're playing the two most important positions outside of a left tackle, yeah. right, um, on their respective squads. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road, yeah. as we're experiencing right now. Nobody ever does anything in this town. I, I love that question. That's an excellent question. Could we see that as a pattern moving forward? I don't remember Milano being there. Them trading up to the 30 and him. Right. And he's a guy who's just, he's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, so you think that they're going to just try to trade and get all these draft picks so they can bundle them up to move up to, to get superior talent? I mean, it's a very collegiate approach, right? Yes. And that's that's what yes. you do in college football is you get the best athletes possible and then you just try and be more athletic than the other team, right? And so in college, that's normally the way that a lot of these teams succeed. That's why a lot of these you know high-profile um Colleges uh, churn out marginal NFL talent, right? I mean, it's just there's some schools that do it well, but like you look at Clemson, just as an example. Like, give me a wide receiver from Clemson outside. Sammy Watkins has not been an NFL success. You cannot tell me he's been an impact. Hopkins. Player. Yeah. Okay. Hopkins. Okay. Outside of Hopkins, there's probably more. I'm just forgetting. Right, but my, my fact remain, the fact remains is that you can think of players from Clemson who are elite level college and yeah yeah you yeah know, like it's yeah. easy to come up with players from Clemson who were drafted high Jeez. because they're they're great athletic players yeah and, and the Bills went with a very athletic approach <clears throat> yeah they're more, do you think that they drafted these guys because they'll cover the coaches' deficiencies I don't think this organiz I don't think this organization under this leadership knew what they did well yet. So the best thing to do was draft the most athletic players and then do what you can to try and fit 
the system to their strengths. Because the truth is, right, these two positions are going to be the crux of your team moving forward. You're doubling down by Allen and Edmonds saying these two guys are going to lead our franchise the next five years. We don't know what we're good at yet. So let's just do what they're good at. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So what are we going to see next season? Are we going to see a similar approach where they take the most athletic players? Or are they going to have an identity and say, no, no, no. We need a player who plays man coverage out of the slot. Great. Because in the scheme, that's what we need. I think you have a... Holy cow. What the... Don't Christmas threw up all over that house. They can see our house from space. <laughs> well, I think, I think you bring up an extra point. I think if you have to shift coaches now, it's easier for guys to come in because they have some pieces that are in place yeah. that are really good. Um, I worry... A side note to that, I worry about the leadership on this team of Kyle Williams and Lorenzo Alexander aren't here next year yeah. on that defense. Yep. But I think you've had a couple other guys that have stepped up into those leadership roles sure. enough. Um, but as far as the talent getting drafted, that could be something that they're trying to do is they're trying to bundle up a lot of these other draft picks, trade up, get talent. If we get talent, all right, we don't have to worry about stuff because talent can trump certain things when they're not always done well. Right. Uh, we've seen it with Josh Allen. All right, this – this wasn't uh, This wasn't a great this, game. This play wasn't great. All right. No, no, I'm talking about for previous games. Okay. This play wasn't great. Allen took off. Blocking was awful. Nobody got open. Yet Allen ran for 25 yards. Talent trumps scheme. Right. You know, uh, it could be from a perspective where on a call, Edmonds thought it was a blitz, and it wasn't. He blitzed, got a sack. Talent right. trumps scheme. Right. So uh, I like the fact that they, they – Went and got guys that they felt were their guys, though, because they pinpointed these guys. Listen, all right, we could have went up to, like, 10 or 9 and got, like, Roquan Smith or somebody or did all – you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You think that – realistically, they probably could have. They had enough capital to do that. Yeah, absolutely. But they said, no, we're going to go up to here, and then we're going to go up to here. The more Allen plays and the more we start to see all these rookie quarterbacks play – with the exception of Baker, because they had no chance of getting an yeah, overall no, pick, yeah. I really think they 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 relegated themselves to say we're not getting Baker. Yeah, I agree. I we agree. want Allen. We really want Allen because he could cover up for things when not everything's done well. And we know this offense early on, not everything's going to go well. I I think had they had the bullets in the gun to get Baker, I I'm not again. This group seems so so much about the culture. I don't. I think the case could be made that Baker's a bad culture fit if you're looking at guys buying him. Now, again, I, players. Cleveland and Buffalo players, are very similar. Though, players in Oklahoma respect. would have run through a wall for Baker Mayfield because he would have yes. run through a wall for them. Yeah. But from a media standpoint, he creates a little bit of a circus because he's not afraid to tell a reporter to go buy yeah, him. Yeah, in, in a small market. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's not, but exactly. Cleveland's not a very huge market. You know what I mean? It's huge now because that's what LeBron created. Yeah. Because it's a bigger market now because of that. But yeah. you think about it in this respect. They didn't address the offensive line. They didn't address the wide receivers. Two things no. that we talked about at the beginning of the season. He can cover up for that. I don't think Baker can. No, I agree with that. Yeah, you're right there. So you're saying, okay, this kid will take his lumps. He works better when his back is against the wall. He has his whole career. So, all right, it will take us two to three years to build the receiver core and the line. Let's get our quarterback now, get him acclimated to the NFL. Will he have to run a little bit? Maybe. You know, we're not addressing everything right now. I know it sounds silly to say that, that you're dra you're trading up to draft a quarterback, the highest this franchise has ever drafted a quarterback, and you're not giving him anything to work with. No. So no. when he does have stuff to work with, it's going to be scary. He learned a lot today. Oh, man. He learned a lot today. He completely misread zone coverage on that first interception. Totally misread zone. Never saw the He stared him down. Yeah. And he decided to go, all right, here. Well, you can't do this. that against zone coverage. You can't You can't stare down. Here. You can't stare down, guys. Because everybody just shifts. Right? You just, everybody just shifts. But to get back to the, the point at hand, right? So, yes, you take the best talent. But I think Edmonds has shown you at this point he is very fast, very quick. Right, still like growing. lightning quick, still a grow, yeah, still a growing athlete. Right, he hasn't completely his body hasn't completely matured yet. Right, no. But um, when you needed him today to step up in the middle, I think he let you down. 
right? I, he his, was he was he was as indecisive as Allen today. Yeah, today was a tough day for him. And but that's what you're going to get when you're drafting the best athlete available because they're not they're not always the most finished player. Any player adjusting the NFL is going to have problems, right? You just hope not to see those problems in week 15, the week 16. Today reminded me of, of when you go to the YMCA to play basketball. Mm-hmm. And there's those five guys that are like 45 and 50 years old, mm-hmm. and they beat the five 18 year old kids yeah. by running pick and rolls and yep. all this old school stuff. Yep. That's what it reminded me of today. Hook shot. <laughs> How do we lose 11 to 6? <laughs> They're playing zone, man. <laughs> they ran picks on us. So, do I think that we're going to see a little bit of a shift to a more, you know, fit, like, like the Trey White pick was scheme specific? Yes. Very scheme specific. Yes. Matt Milano, very scheme specific. Yes. Right? Uh, Tanner Vallejo, again, was a very scheme specific pick. Those were picked because they knew what they wanted to do on defense. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. They drafted Zay Jones having no idea what they were going to do on offense. No. They just knew they needed a receiver. So let's get Zay. And then they, they put him in the wrong spot. They put him outside. He's not an outside receiver. He, he's not. He, Zay's got to play on the slot, but I, I think that's going to limit his opportunities here in Buffalo because finding slot receivers in the NFL is just a lot easier to do. And I, and I know we drafted him when Dennison was here, but it was being a McDermott that drafted him. Right. So, my question to you is this. He wasn't a Dennison pick, so does that mean he doesn't... He's, he's less involved next year? He's enabled to separate himself from this pack of receivers, I think you have to look at it and really ask yourself, um, why isn't he developing the way that you need him to? Like, you cut Benjamin to say, okay, here's your opportunity. Take 100% of snaps, right? No. And it's he's just it's just not working. Because again, they moved him out of the slot again. You know, it's just, it's a mistake. They, they need some outside receiver help. I don't know where they're going to get him. Say he has to be in the slot. He's got to be in the slot. Maybe they draft a, lot, a ton of talent at wide receiver. That's what I mean. You know, maybe. Is that what you do? Because if, if you fire Dable, then do you know what your best offense Do you know what your scheme? I mean, it depends on who you bring you in. If you bring in. Well, if you're bringing in Todd Haley, you're telling me Todd Haley doesn't know from a scheme standpoint what he's going to need coming out of college. Todd Haley's going to be able to tell you, you know, this guy's a better fit than this guy. If you're going to target somebody, target him. Mm-hmm. So I guess it depends on who the who the replacement would be, but I don't anticipate Dable being fired at this point. As predictable no. as the offense is, I just don't foresee him being fired at this point. You're going to so, say, guys, listen, this is what I have to run on offense. Give me the guys that can run it the best. Yeah, that's okay. It. Well, what if they get injured? Well, we'll try to make new. This, you know I, mean? no. I think we can both agree that there's a very likely possibility that this draft will be scheme specific versus talent specific. Right? You think that's fair to say? I think that's um, that's a very good point. I think it's, it's an excellent point that they're going to do that. But there's a caveat to that. Talk to it's me. Only if the, it's only if Dable stays will it happen on offense. If it's on defense, they know what they need. Oh, and Harrison Phillips was, was you know a scheme specific pick. You know, like it's, they they on defense they have an identity. On offense they don't. Yeah, they're replacing guys that they know are going to be gone. So. Right. Uh, do they go for a number two corner knowing that? Levi Wallace has played all right. Exactly. I don't know if they value corner like that. No. Because that second cornerback spot, they seem to be able to fly guys in. I mean, they, you, they're, they need to address linebacker depth desperately. You've held all but Tom Brady under 300 yards passing this year in one game. So in 15 games, I'm pretty sure. I haven't checked the last few games. I don't, I don't think anybody's thrown over. No one, no one else has thrown for 300 yards against you. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. You're good in the pass defense, pretty much. Uh, the defense overall has been really good. I mean, good enough to go to the playoffs, but its offense has just got head still. Yeah, missing the Pats game really showed how impactful Milano was. But again, mm. you know, you look at that, was that scheme or was that talent? I don't know if you're drafting a fifth-round player from town. 